Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I've got something brand new to open up, a box of Innistrad Double Feature. This features cards from Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow in this kind of black and white treatment. Every card was actually individually touched by our artist team inside of Wizards to give it this nice grayscale black and white treatment. And let's crack it open and see exactly what we get. Now this has everything basically for Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow in it. Um, except for, I believe, the full art basic lands. So you crack kind of anything and everything, and there's multiple rares in every pack. So you get two rares per pack, and even three if you crack open a foil. So let's uh, open up this pack and see exactly what we get here. So you'll note that on the sides, too, there's just a uh, color to kind of show off what color the card is. So you still know what it is when it's in play, but the rest of the card is black and white, and the art has this cool black and white aesthetic to it, like old monster movies of, uh, of Era's Past. So let's kind of go through the cards one at a time here. So you can kind of see what you're getting. So you're going to start with four commons from Midnight Hunt. And then you're going to get four commons from Crimson Vow. Ooh, mulch. Nice. You get some double face cards, too. Those are fair game for this product. So even those made it on in. You get some uncommons from Crimson Vow. You're going to get some uncommons. Excuse me. Uncommons from Midnight Hunt there. Uncommons from Crimson Vow. Ooh, Hero's Downfall. Oh, that looks so cool in the black and white. Like, right out of a monster movie, right there. And then, you're going to get some rares. Um, so, you get a rare for Midnight Hunt. Here's Curse of Leeches. You get a rare from Crimson Vow. Here's the, what the gold frame looks like there, too, with Odric Blood Cursed. And you get a guaranteed foil. Revenge of the Drowned. Shiny there. Odric looks pretty cool in the black and, black and white as well. You know, I know on Odric... I guess I'll first I'll, I'll uh, open the next pack and then I'll tell you about uh, Audric. But so that's kind of what you can expect in, in these boosters. A little bit of Midnight Hunt, a little bit of Crimson Vow in every pack. Two rares per. I'm going to kind of walk through these relatively quickly because you've seen these cards before. They're in Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. You kind of know what's going on. I'm just kind of show you what they look like in this uh, in this style, in this frame. And you know, when you hold the bunch in your hand, you can still kind of identify what color they are based on uh, based on the sides, which is nice. So the deal with Audric, I've gotten a lot of questions. Hey, this Audric isn't, uh, actually I'm glad I opened that up because I can talk about it. It's not really what people are hoping for. Hey, Tovalar, sweet. Here's a, now here's a card people were very excited about to command their wolf or werewolf commander decks. Of course, other Tovalar on the flip side. Cool, this would be great. I actually been meaning to go build a werewolf commander deck, so that's actually perfect, Path of Peril. And then a foil bounding wolf right here. Uh, so, you know, I think we would do Audric again if we could do it now and just have it be a thing that happened multiple times when it attacked or something like that. Uh, counting the number of keywords you have is cool, but that felt very audric -y. But the one shoddiness I think is the, is the problem, where you play it, it comes down, it does its thing, and then it just kind of sits in play. Um, in general, I'm not a huge fan of commanders that uh, you just want to kill and recast as often as quickly as possible, which Audric is one of those, which is... Kind of too bad. And, uh, you know, I know some fans were let down by it. Some people are still on board. Ooh, Adeline, right there. Still on board with the card. Hill Tempered Vampire into Howl Pack Avenger. And then a Foil Vampire's Kiss here at the very end. Um, so, yeah, I think there's ways we could have uh, changed the design of it to get to a, the right place to be. But, you know, I, th I think uh, it's kind of underestimated how popular Aud Audric was. You know, it's like, oh, we'll just do another version of a cool legendary, and there's a neat design that was come up with that could maybe be seen as some constructed play. Um, I wasn't really thought about that much for Commander, but, of course, Audric is a massively popular character. And as, uh, as we know now, oh, Delver. Cool, you get that real fly vibe, which is what this card is based on, the fly. Which is to Operation. So, anyway, enough about Audric. Ooh, Mythic, the Sunstreak Phoenix is here. And the Investigator's Journal. And, ooh, a Foil Rare, three rares in this pack, baby. These and then Voice of the Blessed. This is a super popular card. I know if you've played Magic Arena and constructed it at all, you've probably run into uh, some Voice of the Blessed deck at some point or another. People love playing the Ajani's Pride Mate, like Game Boy and the Blessed. Kind of stuff. Actually, a good design lesson to us about how we should make sure that sets 
have cards like that, you know, even though they're never like the strongest thing to do in standard. Although I did play Soul Sisters at Nationals once uh, a long time ago, 11 years or something like that now, 11, 12 years ago. Uh, it's, it's basically never the strong thing to do, but it's, it's a pretty fun. Ooh, Giza, looking good. And here are black and white glory. Ooh, and under land, cool. Oh, I love the blue red frame here. That's really cool. Just getting that kind of like pin lined around the dual end. That's actually really neat. You look at that across the table and it pops. It really stands out. That's actually really cool. And then this larder zombie. It's amazing how much the pin lines of frames do. I know whenever we're looking at like upcoming frames and we, we get uh, get them back, the pin line is not something most people think about. Of course, it's more visible on some of these cards, but uh, it really does make a difference. It's one of the things that you don't know how much it matters until you see a few different frame treatments. And you're like, oh, it really matters on this one. There's another gold card, the Markov Waltzer. We'll call ours Harvest, that's rare here from Midnight Hunt. And Hamlet Vanguard from Crimson Vow. Champion of the Parish and Foil, cool. Another triple rare pack. So yeah, so now you can do it three rares in these boosters. With the, and with a foil every pack, it's more common than normal, because normally, you know, you only get a foil every few packs. But here, you get a foil in every pack. And those two rares to boot. Raid. I'm never really sure what speed to do this at. You know, I've gotten a lot of comments in the comments that are like, go quicker. Some people are like, go slower. Like, oh, that's so nice. I really, really like this pin line, just kind of the black and white pin line thing. Love to like, go do more duelings in the style. And there's Voldar in Estate. Ooh, the gold really shines on this one, too. It's kind of cool. And the Ritual Guardian. But I figure, uh, you know, people always say go at different speeds. I figure for a specially set where you've never seen the cards before and got a lot of stories to tell, I can take my time. But this one, you know, you've seen the open boxes of Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow already, so you kind of know what the deal is there. This is just seeing the, this kind of cool new style and the, how the cards look. Gavany Dawnguard. Gavany. <laughs> Gavany Township. That's what we call ourselves on my stream. Briarbridge Tracker, kind of modeled after Tireless Tracker, which is the card that I made. Ooh, the black green one looks cool too. And Supernatural Rescue. Yeah, we were looking for, back in Shadows of Innistrad, we were looking for, uh, you know, neat, neat ways um, to use clues and like a green creature that would interact with clues in some way. I came up with, uh, with this Tireless Tracker card. I think it got changed a little bit. I think mine was maybe a 2-2 originally. Um, but uh, ended up making it most of the way through, basically uh, unchanged. Oh, that's brutal. Poor little, poor little horsey, black and white. So desperate. So depraved. Would you all want, ever want to see a video that just is like me opening packs of an older set and telling stories? You know, if I were to crack a box of Battle Bond, Fateful Absence right there. Dig up. Woo! Foil over on Farmland. Nice. Let's take a look at this. I think we've got four dual ends already. Is that right? It's pretty cool. Right, I mean, with the dual ends in both sets, you're going to have a decent hit rate on them. So, yeah, I could crack like a box of Battle Bond or Conspiracy. I don't know. Some, some maybe an old commander deck that I worked on. Although, we already kind of have me and Melissa doing the commander series. Which I'm glad you all seem to be enjoying Commander Chronicles. Uh, I actually just messaged Melissa this week and was like, hey, we should go record the next one sometime soon. So probably after Kamigawa previews, you'll start seeing seeing the next one show up. I'm really excited about it, talking about Commander 2017, one of my one of my designs. Wolfkin Outcast is here. Unnatural growth. This is a fun one of I've seen in some like standard mono green decks, just to make your stuff really huge. Oh, two, two strong green rares. Glorious Sunrise here, too. And the Serpentine Ambush. Which side would you want me to crack open an old box of and review the most? And don't, don't just say, like, beta or something like that, you know? It's something that, that you would, you know, that you think I'd get my hands on, or that I might already own. Maybe, you know, in the past ten years. That's I started working at Wizards 11 years ago this year. So, uh, something from my time, at least. Return to Ravnica or newer would be possible. 
got a, I got a few boxes of, of original Innistrad left, but um, that I, I picked up when I was a player. But they're in uh, they're in Russian, so I think opening those up would probably not be as enjoyable for you all. I love the flavor on this wedding security card. Let's feed him in blood. Pay him. You got to pay him somehow. The flavor of Innistrad is always dripping. Pun intended with uh, with the good stuff. Florian, a nice commander there, and volatile arsonist. And Lightning Wolf at the very back there. Cool. Here's the back side of that arsonist too for anyone wondering about that art. Yes, yeah, so I think it's a you know a misconception with this product that we kind of just like put a filter over everything. You know, just like, oh, we'll take all these cards and drop an Instagram filter on it or something like that. But we actually did have our digital artists um, people on our team go in and uh, you know work on every card to convert it into this treatment you know make it try to make it look as awesome as possible Very prisoner wrathful jailbreaker join the dance Oh, Toxrill, oh no. Yeah, this is a card that I know has been seeing a lot of play at uh, Commander Tables. I'm curious what people think about this one, if it, if they're enjoying it, or if it's frustrating. You know, there's it, kind of an interesting story around Toxrill. Ooh, another foil rare. Demonic bargain. I'll tell the Toxrill story, which is, so the blue was added into the activated ability right here. Where'd you go? Right here. Um, to uh, make it work with Sludge Monster, which is another card that hands out those slime counters. Uh, they thought that'd be cute, but in reality, like, the card's not really blue, and that gives a ton of power to it for a commander. So we probably shouldn't have added that little bit and kept it mono black. I think the other problem that the card has is it's trying to be like this cutesy slug commander. Like, oh, maybe you'll like, you know, build some really goofy slug deck. And of course you should make slug tokens for that, but the card is just so brutal, shrinking everything every turn. It's like a little too mean, I think. Um, but on the flip side, ooh, grab the identity. Ooh, Thalia, cool. Getting Thalia in black and white. Yeah, another version of Thalia, one of the rares with the most different versions, thanks to that secret layer with four different ones. And then Silver Bolt here at the back. Um, so, you know, I, I think Toxtrol's like got a lot of cool stuff going on. I, I, the Slug Commander is great, but I probably would have just made it, you know, in retrospect, not that I worked on these sets at all, but um, or the main sets of these, but I would have probably made it mono black and. Um, you know, do something different with the slugs, because crack cashing them in for cards and just killing all your opponent's stuff. It's like, yeah, it's not really a slug commander, it's just a kill all your stuff commander, you know? Here's Suspicious Stowaway, on the backside of Seafaring Werewolf. Oh, the wedding announcement is here. Learn all about Olivia's wedding. Here's the backside of that, going festivity. And then Landhold Harrier at the back there. I hope you, hope you have all been enjoying Kamigawa previews. Uh, that's a set that uh, I am very, very excited about. I've wanted to go back to Kamigawa since I started at Wizards you know, over 10 years ago, 11 years now. And to finally make it happen is so exciting. A lot of neat stuff going on in that set. As I record this, uh, we're about to preview Frexian Tamio today, and uh, I think people are going to go pretty pretty nuts about that. We'll see. We'll see what the reactions are online. But that's one that we've kept under our hat for a long time. Ooh, Willow Geist and the Curse of Hospitality. Get cursed for being so hospitable. And then uh, Olivia's Minute Ambush. Here's a foil. Um, yeah, I you know really kept that one under our lid for a long time, and excited to view it to. To all of you, It'll be a lot of fun reading uh, reading people's comments and speculation about what it all means. Jinkataxius too. There's lots of lots of neat stuff. By the time you watch this, I'll have a video up going over the booster fun of the set too. So I guess shameless plug for uh, for that video. All kinds of neat treatments. For me, the basic lands are just the amazing graveyard trespasser right here. Inspire idea, and then sanctify at the back. Uh, but as for, as for double feature, it's in stores now. It's only uh, one of the cool things about it is it's only for WPN game stores. 
So this is a product we made to, to help support game stores so they can get something exclusive to sell. Um, so go check out your local store, grab a box, support them. I know many of them we are like running uh, running drafts and things like that in places that feel comfortable doing so. I'm a big fan of creating a WPN uh, exclusive stuff. Um, I, lo I love when we do it. I love supporting stores. And uh, although I didn't work on this product at all, I appreciate the uh, appreciate the effort nonetheless. Ooh, foil tainted adversary. Cool foil mythic. It's always nice. You know, if you wonder, Gavin, you said you haven't worked on a few things now. What have you worked on? Well, I've been pretty deep in the trenches on Commander stuff. That's my main focus right now. I've got some upcoming uh, upcoming Commander stuff I'm very excited about showing you all. Can't quite talk about it just yet, though. I did work on Battle at Baldur's Gate, which is a kind of a sequel to Commander Legends set in Baldur's Gate, coming out later this year. It's a big part of that. Stay tuned. Some cool designs of mine are in there. And... Uh, yeah, I guess maybe some things I can't talk about quite yet, but stay tuned. Cruise Finery, cool. Pit Fighter, Dream Shackle Geist, and the Foil Blade Brand. Which gains a death touch until it turn. It's a really great combat trick. I, you know, we've debuted that, um, I think, in Ravnica Allegiance, and we keep just keep putting it into sets. Or at least. At least I don't know how, at least it gets into playtest files a lot. Just like a really nice black combat trick that feels like pretty fair, you know? But nice when it works. So between Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow, I th which limited format was your favorite? You know, they both had things that you liked about them. I think I prefer Midnight Hunt a little bit. The blue, blue black zombie deck I know is a little strong, but I really liked how all that stuff played out. Crimson Vow had, had some cool moments too, though. Bloodthirsty Adversaries here, another adversary from that Midnight Hunt cycle. Torin, here, there. The adversaries were an interesting one. You know, doing a cycle at Mythic is always like a big, a big shot. It's like, are these going to work out or not? I'm glad some of them did end up seeing play. Um, definitely a big risk there. I know, like when we were working on the Theros gods all the way back in the day, right? We're like, okay, we're going to do the Mythic cycle of gods. Got to make them all awesome. And it was really, really hard getting those to be in the right spot. And then had a lot of indestructible stuff. Um, roll around standard. So when you ever do a mythic cycle, you got to be very careful with the kinds of mechanics you put on them, because it'll really, really impact standard if they're playable. But the, yeah, the those guys are pretty fun. Ooh, Hostel Hotel, one of my favorite names in the block. Turns out the creeping in. Just what a what a win here, Hostel Hotel and creeping in. You know, by the way, the, the power toughness box. I didn't call it out earlier, but that's also in this cool color, which is nice. Kind of show off what's going on. Got this Falcon Wrath Four beer. How many bears? Four of them. I gotta say, for a four bear, a uh, three one, pretty impressive. I would expect a four bear to be an eight eight. That's a really bad, uh, really bad magic joke for you, because you know I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna explain it. Someone in the comments will, will explain it. Okay, Soul Griff. Yeah, Kamigawa, um, I think I'm going to probably have Daniel Holt on the channel sometime soon to talk about kind of what's going on there, and I've got some stories to tell about that set as well. Maybe get someone on to talk about the Commander decks. Another Demonic Bargain. Bubble Epicure. I hope you uh, hope you all are going to enjoy seeing the, the debut. Which set are you all excited the most for this year? Is it Kamigawa? Uh, it's, for me, I think it's a toss-up between Kamigawa and, of the main sets, of Kamigawa and Brothers War. I mean, I can't say anything about that one yet, but, uh, you know, just uh, pretty cool to go back and look at look at what was happening in one of the most famous stories of all time. That, I can't say much more about it at this point, though. Rem Carolus, cool. Of course, Dominar United on Infinity, no slouches either. This new Capenna is awesome. Really, really cool new world. I'll have a lot to talk about when we get there, too. Alright, only two packs left. This and one more. 
locked in a cemetery. I love these Innistradian card names. It's like every time we do Innistrad, it's like what cool horror tropes will come up next. Sometimes you, you do a world and you, you like run a little thin on tropes. That happened for us with Amonkhet, where we made Amonkhet and we're like, uh-oh, there actually like aren't as many good Egyptian tropes as we thought to use for this set. Just ones that are widely understood. Another voice of the blessed too. Ones that were, were, were widely understood by, um, you know, an average consumer, but with uh, horror, there's no trouble finding a deep well of tropes. Plus, more are created all the time, right? You, more movies come out, and you make references to more references to them, which is pretty pretty fun. My favorite, the one thirteen for five. Wedding invitation blew my mind. This was seen play in Popper, but uh, yeah, send your atogs through. Of course, that's banned now. Triska decophile. Throw back to card I designed. Triska decophobia. Runo Stromkirk, nice at the very end here. This card I know people have been really enjoying. Has a cool blue black commander that's unique. And then Mounted Dread Knight to uh, round it out. Well, there it is. There's the whole box of Innistrad double feature, all 24 booster packs. If you have any thoughts or things you're curious about, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and it or the stories were useful to you. And I'll talk with you again soon. And in the meantime, may you have fun checking out Innistrad Double Feature at your local game store, as well as, of course, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty previews happening right now. And remember, you got this. Usually involving an Atog and a couple disciples, it can set up to kill you within the first few turns. Now, I've mentioned Atog a few times. We know it's a beloved card and has been one that people have enjoyed all the way since antiquities. So we looked at a lot of cards to avoid